Alright, so I'm using crimson guitar stains. I want to get a purple before I start on this. I want to try and make a purple because I'll explain in another video, but mixing these two colours on a surface, they don't mix very well. So I want to try and mix them in here. I wish I want to use an eyedropper, but don't have one, don't have time, blah blah blah. Uh, I'll try using equal amounts, although I think probably I need to use a fair bit more of the pink than the blue in reality. Actually, I will do that. Okay, so I reckon in there I've got right now double the amount of pink than I have of the blue. It looks kind of purple in there. Now we'll test it on this piece of timber. And to me, that's really just blue. And not a very good blue at that. It's quite wishy-washy and weak. Which is pretty much what happened when I just ran over the top of blue with pink. I wish it was magenta. Okay, so I'm wasting a lot of dye here, but for science. No, Milo. I'm going to get another piece of wood. That's better. Alright. You can see there's quite a difference of colour there. I'll actually use that. That's good enough for me. So I reckon I've got about four parts pink to one part. Alright, so we've got our purple. I want it to be pink, purple, blue. I'm going to do the purple first though, because the purple, from previous experience, God damn this paper, I wish it could stay where it is. Purple, um, it won't mix, that's why I'm doing it first. You can't blend it. So I've just sanded this with uh, 120 and then with 240 and then with 400. Getting into these bits of the axe here, it's probably going to require a brush. Don't know how the hell I'm going to do that. I probably should have done that first, I guess. Alright, so now I'm going to try and do a little bit of blending. Like this. see that. Uh, not much I can do about it at the moment if you can't. So it's just to try and get rid of any hard lines. Hard line's okay there because that's where it's pretty much ending anyway. Alright, so I guess now we can do the pink. I wish it wasn't windy. But here we have about 
I don't know, four or five days a year that seem to be not windy here, so. Now once I touch the purple, I've got to start to get the purple into the pink, so. I've made my pink area way smaller than I actually wanted it to be, but, um, you know, I ended up spreading the purple a lot more than I thought I would. Okay, so now I'm going to start spreading it into it. You've got to be careful when you use a new piece, you'll see it pulled up some of the, the purple there. So I'm going to keep using new bits, because I just want the pink at the moment at full strength. Oops, she tipped it on there. All right. So we'll just start off right out to the edges. I'm not going to actually do the parts that contact the purple until the end because then we start getting uh, the other colour on our cloth. Or paper towel in this case. I'm not worried about the sides because they're going to be quite dark, probably black at this stage. I might, I might leave it blue, even the sides, I don't know yet. It's really hard to get in, in the edges with paper towel, probably needs a brush. See these, this has got sort of cracks here in the timber and it's having trouble getting down in there. Alright, we'll start mixing now. Yeah, the blue really, really, really overpowers the uh, the pink. As you can see there, I went that went over the pink, but it's actually come out almost completely blue. And that's why I wanted to pre-mix the purple because just running them together doesn't really give you a good purple. It just kind of uh, overpowers and depends how it overpowers. It depends on which colour you lay down first. I have done some experiments on it and. Um, I will do a video on it, on what happens when you put one colour down on top of the other and then vice versa. So you can see, uh, in case you want to do it yourself, what kind of reactions you get. Because putting blue on purple gives you a different effect than if you put purple on blue. Oops, didn't mean that, I might want to use dry paper on that. Yeah, that's not really what I wanted, but okay. Maybe we can change that a bit. Of course, this is only plywood, it's not good timber or anything. 
poplar I think it is, or pine or something. Those of you who have been watching this video series will know that this is a test guitar, it's a prototype. Because of that, I decided to do the rest of the guitar with use the yellow, the Crimson Guitar Yellow Stain, because I didn't have any reason to use the yellow. So I thought I'd just do it as a test just to see what the yellow looked like and see if it was a viable color for me to use. I really just got it for mixing other colors. But I thought, ah, I might as well just see how it goes. I was, if I was going to keep this one, I probably would have done the sides either blue or black, the sides in the back. But I just decided to do it yellow and then I'll do a bit of an experiment with some black that you'll see. Uh, and part of that is because I, I used black to hide some imperfections and chip out and stuff in the sides that we got when we were routing. And uh, I used some black and I thought oh, I might as well continue with the black and just do some effects on the guitar. Uh, and I know it doesn't look that good, but uh, it was a test. Also, you can see me now using black on a brush just to get the insides of the Skegox uh, cutouts that we did. And I think the rest of the video will just be me talking again. Bit of colour. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's incredibly ugly, but uh, a little bit wild as well. <laughs> so I'm coating the back of the guitar and the neck, and indeed the fretboard with linseed oil, which is uh, an oil just to give a protective coating over the color. It does actually take a bit of color off, so you've got to be a little bit careful with it as well. I end up doing, I think, I don't know, maybe two coats. Um, whereas I would probably do more like six coats if I was you know, serious about keeping the guitar. On the front of the guitar, where the, the pink and the blue and that is, I think I'd use, um, in fact I do use, I use uh, a poly which is um, is also oils but it's got some some sort of poly plasticky stuff in it and it has a it's a bit more of a shiny coating whereas the linseed oil is quite sort of you know, just a bit of a sheen I guess 
uh, but I only use about one coat or maybe two coats of the poly as well just because this was a test and I didn't want to spend ages uh, doing coatings all right That's definitely a removed colour. I can see the colour's been removed off here. Thank you for watching episode 12 where we applied finish to our Skeg's body shape prototype guitar. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, feel free to subscribe. Thanks.